Welcome back to the shit show that is our show. <laughs> um, last time we left our intrepid heroes, uh, you guys had returned from Jarl Mooch and arrived back at Bryn Chander, thanks to your uh, bear friend, William Minertok. Um, and you spent the last session so, uh, going about your um, uh, various needs uh, Volg, you finished up your uh, Black Ice Blade. Um, you have the journal entry there in uh, your. I do. Yep. Um, uh, you guys had you handled some stuff over at the Black Iron Blades. Um, Zunas and Azra, you guys uh, encountered Jace Allweathers, a, uh, a Southerner who had been trapped here in the Icewind Dale along with you all. Um, who you made a deal with. Uh, he would go to Goodmead, stay at the Speaker House, conduct his research, and in exchange, he would uh, uh, grant you the boons of that research when it came about. Specifically, the uh, expediation of superior healing potions. So that might become an option in the future. And scrivening. Pretty nice. Scrolls of plenty. Yes, and you acquired some little magic trinkets from him in exchange. Um, and then following that, we had the speaker meeting where you, Lawrence, were greeted with all of the speakers of Ten Towns. Um, there seemed to be a, a mix of information that you got. One, of course, being that uh, tonight, this night, is the night of the new moon, where the the cultists or the children of Oral uh, sacrifice to the goddess. Um, additionally, uh, you learn that uh, many of the children of Oral had been seen along the outskirts of the Icewind Dale, that they had been moving beyond the borders of the towns and into the Dale proper. Uh, for what reason, none of the speakers are sure. Um, and then uh, Egdra Dermut, the speaker of Dugan's Hole, uh, reported some strange sounds in the mountains, which you said you would uh, investigate before the next meeting. Yeah. Uh, and so uh, after all was said and done and the various parties departed, uh, you guys arrived back at the Geldenstag's Rest, uh, had yourselves a, an attempt at a blissful night's sleep, only to be awoken up in the dead of night uh, by the chanting sounds of Southwell. Um, immediately you gathered the inclination that, you know, the sheriff, the one who's been uh, helping your endeavors and guiding you along has been selected to be the next sacrifice for him. So grabbing up your things, uh, sparing not a moment too soon, you are currently out amongst the streets over the wailing, whistling winds of the cold, brisk night sky. Uh, you can hear again the chanting, uh, the chantings of the crowd uh, both from followers and from the acolytes themselves, as they are clearly making their way through Bryn Shander in search of the sheriff. I was going to say, do we even know where the sheriff lives? Uh, you do not. <laughs> Fuck. Do we know which direction the uh, cult is going? Um... From oh, where you're standing out here in the cold, <laughs> it's, it's hard to say. Um, so, what are you guys doing? All right, well, we're we're at the inn, right? Yeah, you guys are currently outside Gelden Stag's Rest. Okay, go back in, wake up the innkeeper, or whoever's on watch, and ask him very hurriedly, very. Ne nearly aggressively, which means he's actually risen his voice above a whisper. Where does the sheriff live? Emergency. Okay. 
Uh... Alright, so you 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 you're, you're, you've been here a couple times. You know where the innkeeper is staying. Uh, and you bang on her door, and uh, after a couple moments, uh, you see uh, Myrtle there, completely haggard, just kind of you know winking her eyes open, like quiet. Uh, what? What's, what seems to be the issue here? Just uh, sorry for disturbing your sleep, but it is very important. It is emergency. We need to know where the sheriff's residence is. The sheriff? In, he is in danger. He, uh... I think he lives over by the town hall. Do, do you know which which building? Uh, she kind of gives a hopeless shrug. It will have to do. Uh, thank you. And he'll, he'll turn back to his companions and it's like, uh, we must head to the town hall. He is somewhere near there, but they do not know where. So we'll have to find something there once we get nearer. Don't forget there before the cultists do. As we should do that, we gotta do so quiet. Yeah, I was gonna uh, say, we would probably want to run in opposition to any of the cultists. Obviously, they aim at the same location, but avoid in the same street system. Well, um, as far as you know, the children of Oral have taken root at the House of the Triad. Uh, formerly a, a, an establishment for worship for the gods that did govern Bryn um, So you guys are sort of out shouting out. very loud then. <laughs> I think the sheriff would know. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just run to the uh, middle of the town. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully there will be some house that's sort of decorated uh, like the town. So I'm, in, I'm in plate mail. I'm not stealthing. It's the expediency yeah, yeah. Uh, is more important than being quiet at this point. Besides, to, to the cult, we wouldn't be an issue unless we attack them. Um, yeah, so as, as you guys uh, take what information you have and pull towards the center of town, you know, uh, cold wind sort of whipping past your faces. You can make out, uh, you know, figures amongst some of the um, lit windows, sort of looking out, seeing what, what's causing all the commotion. Um, and some who are able to sort of even hear uh, what these uh, uh, the children of Oral are saying, just quick, completely, just quickly go back inside and shudder everything. Um, by the time you get to the center of town. Um, it does, it does seem that the four lights have begun to focus around uh, the center in particular. As you can see, um, sort of like, as, as you sort of come across to like this intersection, you can see uh, uh, a number of them having gathered around the town hall. Uh, there's, there's faint sounds of, of jeers and calls over the cold wind. So it's like they're... Uh... They presume he's in the town hall, so they're trying to call him out. Um, fr from this distance, it's hard to tell, but maybe. Okay. Lunis will uh, summon his familiar Gabriel with a snap of his fingers and command the owl to go to the second floor windows to see what can be seen. Fly around the structure, see if you can find him. Okay. Um... And uh, Zunas himself will uh, grab the shoulder of uh, Lawrence for guidance because his own eyes are going to be uh, sharing the owls. With okay. Uh, so, um, I will see if I can just do this with you. I think, it, I think it's just like I drag your name onto the screen, right? If you drag the name on the bottom of the screen, where Zunus Wizard Mark of the Dragon, if you drag yeah. that to the map icon at the top of your screen, that'll drag just me. Okay. All right. So you should you should see just yes. that. Yes. Okay. So um, as as the owl is uh you know swooping around, um you know with dark vision, I'll, I won't need you to roll perception. So uh, this is this is what you see uh, from the exterior. Um, sort of 
swooping by the windows, getting the full picture. Uh, you can also see uh, through the base windows uh, this setup. Um, where there's a large commotion that's sort of being uh, bottlenecked at a staircase. So Zunus is going to be uh, basically giving the guided tour for the rest of the party while we're continuing to approach. Yeah. There, and there then, are a number of, of uh, cultists outside. Yeah, inside the building, there's uh, quite a crowd. Armored figures, and I'm not quite sure who everybody is. But well, from what you can tell, it there's there's sort of a mix. Um, the the uh, these figures are what seem to be you know actual, actual members of the town that have joined in. Um, the, the the diamond symbols are uh, actual orolites. You know they're they're sort of dressed with the garb. And then you have these um, curious ones amongst them who are also dressed as orolites but have these bandages around their eyes. Um, but as, as the owl swoops to the second level, uh, you also get, uh, this picture, um, as well, where you do see, where you do in fact see your quarry, um, on the second level being attended to by another individual. Ah, I found him. He is still safe, but it looks like he is perhaps, uh, cornered. Is uh, upstairs. I think the the people on the first floor are trying to get up. Uh, Must hurry. I do not think he has anywhere left to go. Go get him out through a window. To where? There are cultists surrounding the building. Can we even take on that many people? <clears throat> How many did the elf see? Uh, there are uh, nearly half a dozen outside. It's uh, nearly double that inside. Perhaps less, perhaps more. It's hard to say. There's a crowd. We need to bottleneck them somehow. Uh, while this is going on, Vogue switches to Halberd. Do not. Uh, I've been hoping to avoid this, but I do not think we have a choice. It's, it is time to use force. Do not let the Orlites do this. Let's throw out the light. Um, we could introduce ourselves by trying an axe at someone. I mean, unless, that, right? unless somebody thinks that you can convince them to change their mind, I do not think that all of them are uh, uh, die-hard members. I think some of these are just crowd mentality. Yeah, uh, all, all the, your, your character would be there. You know, they, they would have been in Bryn Shander during this time. Let's go crack a few skulls then. I'm all for giving the Oralites their just desserts. We'll see if we can't uh, sway some others to our side, if possible. If the opportunity arises, we should get the sheriff out and leave in a haste. So as we're approaching the structure, are we just going right down the middle of the street? Like, are we in clear view? Um, so at this point, you guys, you know, you, you have a clear advantage on what's going on here, or get, plus the information that Zunus was able to provide you. So I guess the question is, like, are you just charging in, or are you trying to, like, uh, weave your way into the trouble? I, I think we're probably past the point of weaving and waving. <laughs> All right. All right um, so I, I'll move everyone. This map so where I was go leading in with that 
is if we're coming down in clear view, Zunus will have the owl uh, fly up to the closest window that is facing us and start tapping on the, the window to get the sheriff's attention. Basically getting him to look out the window to see we're coming. Okay. Um, Fortunately, right. I don't have a Hogwarts letter to hand him, but... <laughs> Hopefully it'll do. I've been accepted. <laughs> Got our wizard, Sheriff. I mean, that would help. Just, uh, <laughs> I don't think about a wizarding, a wizardly sheriff would be amazing. So I'll stick you all there. I'll just drag these guys over. Uh, so... Uh, Lauren, it's perhaps you are persuasive. Maybe you can give them one last chance to do the right thing before we start throwing fire. Ah, that would would lose the element of surprise. So I say myself that maybe just you should drop a spell on them since you can probably do the most damage. I do recall you did pick up a scroll of sleep as well. <laughs> mm. Oh, yes, that I, I did. I mean, if we've Thank got you, the trouble, then it's... All right, um... I'm just going to walk up to these two people that are uh, near us and uh, see if I can persuade them to go. I don't have... Yeah, words in mind at the moment, so should I just make a persuasion check? Uh, what, what are you trying to convince them? <laughs> I am trying to convince them to uh, like, you want them to back down? Are you trying to override their frenzy? Yes. Convince Which... them that what they're doing is uh, Pointless. They, they're just uh, jumping in on this, and they're not even aura lights, you know. Okay. Um, I would say that's a persuasion check. Uh, it's going to be particularly difficult, though. Uh, it's a good thing I've got expertise in it. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. As you try to persuade these people to leave um, you, know, you, you can see the like fear and desperation in their eyes um, and as you as you sort of like call out to them try to uh, reach for their humanity um, some of them sort of take a moment to like look down at themselves like, uh, but oh I don't know what to do it's like uh, and then the others you know are in similar states of bewilderment um, but they like there's there's only like a few moments they all share with the rest of you before they, they just run off wordlessly That was easier than expected. Oh, as soon as they disperse, I was running to the doors. Okay, the, the doors are open, um, so you can like see inside uh, into this uh, base level. All right, what's going down in there? Um. So as as Zunas had saw, seen before. Uh, you have the these uh, oral lights who are represented by the sigil of oral, um, all crowded around the staircase that leads up to the next level. Um, and as you all enter, uh, the oral lights quickly turn around. It's like, there, Southwell's conspirators. Oh boy. <laughs> I need you all to roll initiative. Okay. I'm actually looking at the sh like diamond things. Uh, th those are like oral lights. Um, 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Diamonds yeah, are the hardcore. The bodies. Yeah, these, these are the ones who are actually dressed in the, like, you know, the white and light blue trimmed robes of Oral. Who's the, who's the guy in the middle there? The Aura, like, drip. Uh, so this guy is a noble. Uh, this one's just another person, and this one's another person. Um, yeah, it's like a, it's a rebel. Rebel, rebel. Well, we can tell who the real aura lights are, so easy to separate them out. Second. All right, so the regular folks go on fourteen. Um, aura lights. Go on two. And then these uh, blindfolded fellows who are also in the Oralite garb go on 14. All right. In descending order, Halden, you are the first to go. Halden gets in here. Um, I'm going to slash twice my short sword. At the aura light. Okay. Both Ooh. of those hit. Uh, and the aura light goes down. <laughs> okay, I will uh, use a key point and uh, punch with flurry of blows at this noble non lethally. <laughs> okay. <laughs> just, just, just taking him out. All right, so in a whirlwind of motion, you just cavalcade these punches and the noble just goes sputtering back, crashing into the table to make sweet chin music in his face alright that's two that's my turn okay Volg alright, Volg's charging in into this position and it's gonna smash some aura lights in no particular order. Uh, let's take the one above him first. Okay. Uh, 25. That hits. That's like damage. Come on, slashing. Uh, he's still up. He's still up. Uh, switching targets to the one to my top right. So he'll, he'll be played. Alright. Mm -hmm. Uh, that hits. Also okay. plays. And they're both up. They're both up. Uh, action surge. Uh, the three to my left need to make a... con save. Okay. You're doing... Yeah, you're doing the... cold breath? Yeah, on the three to my left. All right. I just imagine his cold breath is him taking some mints and then breathing on people. He's <laughs> gonna yeah. ah. taking some of the fresh makers. <laughs> Mental. Uh, all right. So the hood guy saves, and then gets a ten. Okay. So, so uh, the guy in the hood six. saves. Yeah. So it's six for him, and then twelve for the ones that didn't save. Okay. Um. That, that's enough to uh, freeze and bloody this one. Uh, the guy behind him is absolutely frozen. <laughs> oh, you can't save more. Um, and so the the one that succeeded gets half. Yes. Okay. All right. And I'm done. Yurik. Uh. I am able to stand the noble if he's not a tower, or oh, would I? Yeah, he's 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 prone. So I'll be able to stand above him. All right. Yeah. There there is the um the aura light that's like uh, to the north of him. Yeah 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 yeah. I wanted to see if I could go there instead. Okay. Uh, I think I'll just attack this aura light. Okay. Uh, I get I get a flanking bonus with Volga, right? Yep. You get plus one. 
uh, hits and finishes him off. Oh, good. Uh... Yeah, cause I'll, I guess, move where he is and attack the guy on the left. Wait, are you just firing the longbow point blank? No, 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 this is... Oh, sorry, that's not what I wanted to do. Oh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, stupid. Sure, sword. <laughs> okay, well, that, that still hits and finishes him off. Okay, that's good. <laughs> that's a nine damage, that's uh, no, that's uh, other stuff, if I needed it, so it'll just be the uh, piercing. Uh... Yeah, but, uh, yeah, I'd attack this guy on the uh, left-hand side. Okay. And uh... I was going to say, I, I, I will use the Colossal... Oh, I should have said that beforehand. The Colossal Slayer to do the extra damage. On the Hooded guy? The, uh... Yeah, yeah, that's the six gotcha. added to the piercing. So that would be uh, okay. Uh, he's still up, but he is bloodied now. All right, and that'll be the end of my turn. Yeah, you get the sense that these hooded guys are a little tougher than the common acolytes. What? Oh, good. All right. They have special eyes. Oh, Zunus. Look what he specialize. So Zunus is all ready to throw a fireball in there, and then it's like, oh. <laughs> 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 okay. Is that why you try to grease them up so they burn? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was look. I was just trying to see what the details were because I couldn't remember this area of effect in, in this one. The uh, the armored folks in the back, uh, they're not part of the Aurelites, correct? No, uh, you you recognize them as like you know militia you would see around the town hall. They are like one of them's currently got a shield and is like pushing back on the Aurelites who are trying to get up the stairs. Okay. Um, let's see, yeah, one second, so I gotta remember what this does, change of plans last minute, the curse of a caster. <laughs> okay. Zunus is going to come up behind uh, Halden and uh, spread his arms wide as a near, near solid, rapidly moving wall of water just forms right over these guys here, blocking them off from the, the guards in the back. Okay. And hopefully uh, messing with them to some degree. So, difficult terrain, any ranged weapon attack has disadvantage. Basically uh, won't do anything until they try to get through. Gotcha. Sounds good. Only one foot thick, so it's not like taking up a whole lot of space there. Right. All but right. Yeah. Floor to ceiling, it's like a water art display. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, so this, this great wall of water just completely uh, flourishes from around the sides of the room and collects, separating the guards from the intercepting acolytes. Uh, now it is these guys' turns. Um, upon each of their bandages uh, is uh, clearly branded the sigil of oral. Um, and as as you get in close, Zunus, uh, their attention hones in on you um <laughs> and here one of them remark halt there is another as well um and one of them uh, reaches up towards their bandage and pulls it down and within you see a glowing singular eye like a you know, like a cyclops um and they immediately cast their gaze uh, in such a way that Zunus, or you, Zunus, Halden, and Volg, yeah, because you're 15 feet. Um, I need you all. Let me just double check this. Might not be a save, might just need a roll. Sorry. Um, you all need to make a constitution saving throw. 
I will not be stopped. I, I, I got very excited for a moment because, <laughs> well, you rolled at exactly the same time I did. <laughs> like, oh, yes, yeah, Oh, fuck. That wasn't mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those of you who did not save, you will take uh, this in full damage. Uh, this is cold damage. Uh, and then you, of course, will, will save her half. And then he gets it halved again. And so does Zoom's. That's cold. Zunus hey, takes, Zunus takes half of that because of the cold resistance, but he still had to make his concentration save. Oh, gotcha. Oh. <laughs> I was wondering about that. Oh, wait. Oh, that's right. You cast the wall of water. That's what you're uh, and that's that's just with the gaze. Uh, in, in addition, the, uh, the one beside Volg is going to make two claw attacks. Uh, all right, the first one. Excuse me. That's going to be a twenty. Yep. And the second one is going to be at 23. Yes, indeed. OK. Uh, so you'll take 10 slashing damage total as um, the Acolyte's robes layer back. And you see, instead of hands, these almost monstrous uh, aberration-like claws that just uh, try to shred and tear through your armor. Uh, in addition, the second one, beside the wall of water, uh, is going to move atop the table. <clears throat> that would like sh- tr- tr- trigger my... Yeah, it triggers my thing as well. Uh, yeah. Because you have the halberd. That I do. Yeah. Uh, ten does not hit. Well, even, yeah, even with the plus one, it doesn't hit, unfortunately. Um, the 15 does. Hey. So you managed to get a little more on him. Um, and he, too, is going to uh, pull back the blindfold for a moment, flashing you all with a singular eye that casts out this penetrating cold gaze. And I need, uh, let's see. Lawrence is outside the range. I need everyone else to make another constitution save. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Helping. Uh, so, if you, so the DC is 12. If you didn't save, then you take eight cold damage. Obviously, half of the rest. Um, you do. And then it's going to finish its movement by uh, stepping over to Halden and re- trying to rend them with two claw attacks. Use your nails, boys. <laughs> All right, Halden. Uh, first claw is going to be an eight. Don't presume that hits. No. Uh, second one's gonna be a 15. Nope. And they both miss. Yeah. All right. Uh, that is them. Um, uh, <laughs> the, the one regular person uh, watching all of this is kind of kind of shaken out of their stupor. Um, they're going to uh, move back here. But they are they are just gonna like um, pick up like a cup that was like on one of the tables and just sort of like they look at Volk and then they second guess it and throw it at Yurk. Did eleven <laughs> hit them? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, it hit them. They take fourteen. How <laughs> are you doing, Lethal? <laughs> <laughs> Are you doing lethal as well? Why are you questioning that? I'm going, maybe. It's not Okay. It's fine either <laughs> way. Just wanted to know. 
Um, <laughs> so they, they get ready to throw this cup and you just sort of whack them with the reach of your halberd and they just go down. <laughs> Don't touch that cup. <laughs> Meanwhile, the guards on the stairs are continuing to um, keep themselves ready as you know this wall of water continues to defend them. Uh, Lawrence, it's now your turn. <laughs> Okay. Um, I'm gonna use. I'm gonna uh, step up one step. I'm gonna use um, Tasha's hideous laughter on the uh, rogue figure next to Volk, which will knock them prone. Succeeds. Oh, well, if they okay. fail. Uh, what do you need from me? Uh, wisdom save. What's Tasha's hideous left to sound like, Azra? Yeah! <laughs> That's pretty good. Kind of... Appropriately hideous. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they, they got a natural one. <laughs> well, they are now on the floor laughing their friggin' ass off and Volg's about to fucking chop it off. <laughs> I would, I would hope it'd be like Jimmy Carr's laugh. <laughs> no so you get advantage. Have fun. <laughs> All right. Yeah, they, um, they, they're breaking out into a, a a mad cackle. And as a bonus <laughs> action, I'm going to cast um, Mass Healing Word. I don't have a setting for that yet, so I'm just going to say this is a normal healing word <laughs> and just give it to everybody. <laughs> You I'm know. not sure oh, if you can do both of those. Uh, uh, it, it, can't do two spells. It's, 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 it's a bonus action. Yeah, you usually still can't when do you, two spells. You, uh, you, you, generally speaking, if you cast a spell, the only kind of uh, other spell bonus or otherwise you can do is a cantrip. Uh -huh. You can mix a cantrip and a bonus action, but not usually two actual like level one or higher spells. Okay, so if I had used Firebolt and then used Healing Word, that would have worked. Yes. yes. All right. You can throw an inspiration out. That you can totally do. Oh yeah! Yeah, I was forgetting. How could I forget about that? Uh, all right. I'm gonna give Bardic inspiration to um all the. You're up next. Take it. All right. Drink it down. All right. Uh, now. It is the Acolyte's turn. And there are two left. Uh, let's see. <laughs> um, uh, both of them are going to cast a spell on themselves. And they will immediately be enthralled with a misty, frosty air. Is that by chance uh, an ice effect? No, that's that's just flavoring. Right. <laughs> Darn. Mix ice and water walls. Fun things happen. Frosty. No, but uh, they they seem uh, guarded by. Some, some extra force. Uh, as uh, they they call out to the standard bearers. Go on, more will come. We just need to hold them here. It's your turn, Holden. All right, I will. Two swings. Uh, but those hit. Okay. So that's 15. Uh, that's the one to your top left. Yeah. He's down. All right. Um, Alden will move into position right here. 
that one part five scene from JoJo's where y'all just start taking the person down. <laughs> All right, uh, is that it? Um. He is okay. down. If you did flurry him, you would have advantage. I will. Okay, so that's it. Uh, and he takes 17 and is played. They, when they take damage, they can redo the saving throw. Okay. <clears throat> uh... He oh, got a natural oh one again. <laughs> I'm just sitting down there. You, 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 you my cackle turn. as we beat the shit out of you. Don't kick shame. <laughs> like this, this, this guy is having the time of his life. Not by his, not by his own choice. Bold. <laughs> okay, I'm sure he's gonna blame the uh, boner on the spell as well. Uh, looking at the two that have like the ice effect, and then down at the standard bearer with the the hideous laughter going on. It's just gonna be like, what's so funny, and then swinging it. <laughs> oh. <clears throat> <laughs> That's that's gonna miss. Well, good thing I can do it again. <laughs> that hits. He, he laughed and rolled out of the way. You first second. Like, <laughs> Uh, but the second one does uh, put him down. And the laughing stops. Forever. A killing joke. Uh, <laughs> oh, he's gonna move here. Love that joke. Alright. Yurik. Hello. Uh, what's the effect on the acolytes again? They are shrined in this sort of... Um, uh, frosty aura that is, you know, sort of causing these ice crystals to form and swirl around them. Uh, well, I don't like the look of that, but I think I will try striking the one closest, obviously. Okay, I will need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh. Did attack or did... That fails. Um... <laughs> so, uh, on a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. <laughs> uh, there isn't a new target. I should have moved first. So you can either attack Volg or lose the attack. I guess I'm going to lose the attack because <laughs> I don't want to hit Volg. Yeah, as, as, your, as, your, as your blade sort of goes in, the, um, the swirl of frosty ice around them immediately sort of like collects and redirects the blade. <laughs> so this, they've got some sort of magical bullshit. Sharpened steel usually ends such things. Uh, does Yurik does have a second attack? Well, I was going to say, I obviously have two, two short sword shorts. Yeah. So would I still be able to get my second hit and my extra attack? Uh, yeah, you would. You would just have to make a new save for it. Oh, okay, I guess I'll just do that then. <laughs> that one, that one gets through. All right, I'm gonna do um, Colossus Slayer on it as well. Okay. So that's uh, 12 damage. Oh no, unless it doesn't hit. Uh, no, it hits. Um, hey. These guys are just wearing robes. Uh. Yeah, so you, you kind of anticipate where you think the blade is going to be redirected and then time it well enough to kind of gash into the guy's neck. Ah! Falls over. Nice. Um, with that, I can move there and I'll obviously attack him with my extra attack. Okay. I'll need a wisdom save. A wisdom save there. That fails. Well, I presume I yeah, just missed the attack. Yeah, I did. Um, they're, they're clearly being shrined in some kind of sanctuary by their god. Um, <laughs> Zunus. Uh, Zunus is going to run forward. Double move. So as he passes Volk, he's going to shout out, uh, Finish up here! I think we're checking on the sheriff. 
spent 15, 20, 25, 30, because that's a uh, difficult train to get through the water. 5, 10. I am here to help the sheriff. Move aside. Do the guards let me through? Uh, they do. But you're going to have to, like, climb over the, the, the banister. <laughs> Not a problem. The potion he had drank when he started uh, this whole discussion was a potion of climbing. Okay. So you're, you're actually just... Pasta. Yeah, you're just walking on the walls now. Yeah, he's literally like just scampering over the railing and banking off the walls, like nightcrawler <laughs> style. The, the, the guards, you know, are a bit in awe, but like they immediately sort of shift aside. 15, 20. So wherever this spot is, upstairs. Okay, so you, you, you would probably be standing like bes beside the chimney. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, and it, as as you appear, uh, Southwell is of course shocked, and he immediately moves his hand to the guard beside him to stay the crossbow. It's like Tunis. Matters are in hand downstairs. Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. They managed to track me down at my home, but I gathered a few of my militia, and we hold up here. <laughs> we need to get you out of here. He. The, we overheard discussion that the fight downstairs is just a holding action. More are coming. Ah, oh, shit. Sure, that's that's as far as we get in the six second turn. Yep. Um. Uh. So those, those guys are taken care of. Uh, the one civilian is down. Uh, Lawrence. Uh, there is just the one acolyte left. All right. Okay. Uh, so they get. <laughs> get what you fucking deserve. You need to make a wisdom saving throw. Yep. Why? I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, you better. <laughs> and you hit the DC. <laughs> um, Alright, so you managed to uh, avoid the power that this supernatural effect is having and then just stay your hand long enough to fire this bolt and it just immediately hits this guy in the chest. He goes, <gasps> as his lungs just burn out and he falls forward onto the floor. Well, I hope it was all worth it for you. Alright, combat's over for now, but who knows for how long. Uh, but we'll move to the door here then. Okay. Uh, Zunas, are you still maintaining the wall of water? For now. Until okay. I... Okay. Until I know not to. Gotcha. Um... So as, as you were standing there, then, Zunas, as you're talking with Southwell, you can clearly see he's vexed about this. It's like... I, I don't want to abandon Brinjander. I've, I've sworn an oath to protect this place. You are dead. You can protect nobody. Don't be a fool. Think. Tactics. If they are coming here to trap you here, you need to be not here. Lose your fight. The, uh, the guard next to him was like, He has a point, sir. We, we know as well as anyone how powerful the Aura Lights have gotten. Leave now. Fight another day. Clearly, just, you can see like a world of thought behind the sheriff's eyes. More expression, you know, consideration you've seen in him in all the time that you've worked with him. If nothing is, we must go to the town hall or leave the town someplace more defensible than your home. We know to come to you here in force. Do you have anywhere in mind? Uh, we can go back to the inn. We can go to your, your jails. They must be defensible. 
Or you could leave the town altogether. The jails are at the bottom of this building. I wouldn't leave say up, they're very leave defensible. Above the jails. <sighs> just like completely taking out of the moment for a moment. For a second there, it's like, you live over the jail? <laughs> yeah, I would be too, to be honest. <laughs> like... <laughs> well, th this is the town hall. This isn't where he lives. Um... Oh, I thought this was his residence. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was too. No, I, the, I said the, the Oralites had gathered around the town hall. Um, I, I misread yeah, the, the situation. The, That's fine. Yeah, the... <laughs> uh, but at any rate, um, yeah, he explains that the, the jails are at the bottom there there is only one way in but i mean there's so many oral lights that you you just get swarmed we need to be we can flee to good speed one of our companions lawrence is the speaker there you know last at least ensure that uh, the local area is secure if not we can go back to the inn or we can just uh, go to the hills just need to regroup and think. Doth will not. <sighs> Very well. We'll agree to your plan. A tactical retreat for now, but I will return to Bryn Shander. Good, good. Flee now, return later. Come, let's go. With that, he uh, grasps the shoulder of his uh, uh, militiaman next to him. Send word to Duvessa Shane that I am fine and that I am, I am with our mutual friends. I will send word soon. The, the uh, guard hurriedly nods as he uh, joins you in descending down the stairs. As we descend the stairs, uh, Zunas just kind of like parts his hands like a, a Moses motion and the wall just falls apart. Split a blade. <laughs> um, yeah, so you, you all see uh, Sheriff Southwell coming down the stairs along with Zunas. Um, and he... It's like, it's like, well, I wish I could have seen you all in better circumstances, but it seems that time is of the essence. That it is. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, looking out the front door, is there any, like, is the crowd still there, or more people coming, anything? Uh, you, you do hear uh, the sounds of more people coming. Mm, cavalry is on the way. Can take care of these. Do we have some free time to take uh, an action before any more action? Uh, what are you looking to do? I'm going to... Um, pull uh, one or two animals out of my bag of tricks. Hey, you. Okay. Um, yeah, first with the sheriff, so they chase that instead. Genius. <laughs> yeah, you, you would have time to pull some animals out of the bag of tricks. I can only pull three at a time, so I'm going to pull three. Um, I... I don't. I need to put it on my sheet. I forgot. It's it's fine. Roll roll a d8, and I'll tell you what you get. All right, four. Uh, four. Uh, first one you get is a boar. All right. Your name is um, Janice. Just oh, you got the great bag. That's the good one. Lunch. This is no time for lunch. What was number six? <laughs> uh, six. Uh, you get a, a giant badger. Jerome. It is a medium-sized beast. I was going to say if it was a honey badger, they'd be fucked. <laughs> and then five. Uh, you summon the panther back. Jeremy! <laughs> <laughs> Lawrence goes to pet, pet Jeremy on the head. All right. Uh, let's just visualize this for a second, guys. He just <laughs> pulled out a six foot long nearly five foot tall badger this thing's the size of a horse <laughs> it's what, your honey badger <laughs> this thing's scary as fuck yeah it's medium sized <laughs> at least medium <laughs> but yes 
at least one it's of the us size has a, of a mount man. now. The mount. <laughs> it's it's the size of like a human. It's not small. All right, what are you doing with the animals? Um, um, well, they're just part of the fighting force. Um, <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna have this gi the giant badger go outside and like on the st steps, and uh, same thing with the boar. So if anyone comes, they can. Uh, I'm gonna have them. Uh, right. Uh, Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna have uh, the, ba the the big badger and uh, the boar go outside. Jeremy is staying inside. <laughs> well, I, I presume that the plan now is you guys were just gonna, you know, get the fuck out. Yes. Yeah, well, we're getting the fuck out. And those those Seems like it. Those two are going to be uh. Okay, so these these are sort of like the rear guard. Yeah. Okay. So with Which... that said, um, as. He pulls animals out of his hat, literally. Um, Zunus is going to gather everyone together. It's like, uh, which way are we going? Both these are to the southwest, yes? I uh, let me just switch to the Grin Shander map. Uh, I think I just okay. okay. I basically want to go back towards the inn and then the gates. So you guys are right here. Okay. So around the main entrance of this uh, structure that we're currently at, uh, he's going to drop a fog cloud to obscure what's going on inside as we slip out the back. Okay. So immediately this... A uh, big, obfuscating cloud begins to arise, just as you hear uh, the sounds of more acolytes and uh, frenzied towners coming closer. Wait quietly now. Everyone, to the east. Must make it to the gate before they do. All right, let's, let's get running. <laughs> okay. Um... Can I just say what a horrifying thought it would be to meet a giant badger in the middle of a fog cloud all of a sudden? At night. Yeah, when they meet <laughs> Jerome, they're, they're gonna have they're gonna have a real shit time. And when they open the doors, there's just a pile of dead bodies. Oh wait, oh so you're <laughs> leaving the animals there? Uh, Jeremy is coming with. Um, I'm, I'm gonna. <laughs> you're leaving the giant badger and the boar for the welcoming party. For the welcoming party, they're gonna have a fucking rough time. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That, that boar is going to gore somebody. All right, so as, as you leave the two animals behind while well, you guys sneak out the back and hurry your way along the streets, um, it does not seem that the cultists have gotten this far, so a lot of your uh, exit strategy still holds up. Just as you hear um, over the breeze the distant yelps and cries as uh, your other two animals get to work. <laughs> Lawrence chuckles to himself. Good going, boys. I'm gonna name right. every animal that comes out of the, the bag of tricks after like a, a J. They all start with a J. Okay. Um, <laughs> as as you all continue moving along, um, the the brilliant night sky that you see above you, um, and the faint aurora that's always there, um, whenever uh, Oral casts her rhyme upon the world. Uh, quickly begins to swirl into a gently forming uh, overcast, and it begins to snow. You begin to feel that dry coldness coming with it as you barrel, barrel your way towards the east gate and back to Geldenstag's rest. I presume we're not stopping. <laughs> I think we should get some provisions. Keep going. We can make camp outside in the fields. Will not be noticed. I cannot trust anybody here. They were common citizens amongst the Oralites. Everyone's in a frenzy. They're all scared. Yes, as are we. (laughs) (laughs) 
straight out onto the east way then. Um, so are you like are you trying to like stop at Gelden Stags and like pick something up, or are you just continuing to just go? I was gonna say what provisions would we have from there? Zunus is suggesting that we start to get some additional food, perhaps some rations, but that's a suggestion from Zunus. It's up to you guys. I think, um, let me just check. Well, I'm presuming it's night, and I don't know if we would be able to get food from the inn. Yeah, we'll have, use the, we'll have to use the uh, drive through. <laughs> <laughs> right, so it, it sounds like folks are in favor of just continuing to go. Then go we shall. All right. Um, yeah, you, you verily arrive at the East Gate. Um, and thereupon you see, you know, two, two of the militia men taking guard. Um, but upon seeing you all, uh, familiar figures as you are, as well as uh, Sheriff Southwell, they, they look surprised. Like, uh, sir! Um, they kind of stand to salute. Sheriff melee dresses. Stand down! I'm taking a temporary vacation from Bryn Shander. If anyone asks... I've been carried away on important business, but I will be back soon. They nod to attention. All right, let's go. Very well. Make haste. No time yeah. to waste. It's right on the east way. This way. Or the east. Yeah. <laughs> Ori, uh, does it look like anybody is following us? I can say, should I roll perception for that, sure? Uh, yeah, you can roll perception. Um, it, it seems at least for a moment you guys have managed to, uh, dash ahead of the mob before it uh, was able to follow your trail. Uh, you can still hear the faint sounds uh, coming from the city behind you, but they are uh, at increasing distance with each step you take. Keep moving to our outside of the town. They will set up camp. I think we should get off the road. It would be the most common place to check first. Uh, do we uh, have foliage on the way? I was going to say, wasn't there a forest on the uh, east way? I yes. was just about to move to the map. <laughs> there you go. Two miles Eight. down the road. So, um, so t by, by the east way, good meet is about, you know, six hours. J just for, you know, relative distance sake. Um, but getting to the forest should take you about like three. Yeah, so it goes as the crow flies to good mead. Okay. Um, now, what's the plan? Are you go like just camping out the forest? You go into good mead. What's what's the general plan? Uh, as, we as we have time to discuss this matter logically, let us. Uh, bring to light our options, yes? We could uh, spend the night in the wilderness here, between either the forests or the open field. I can provide a shelter if needs be. Or we could head straight to Goodsmead, or perhaps Dugan's Hall. Uh, but uh, we have a difficulty there. While Lawrence is the speaker, we know that he has uh, opponents there. And we do not know if the Auralites have uh, infested Goodmead's populace as well. We know that they do they do uh, follow the rituals there. We do not know how many people may uh, turn on us. Personally, I would be in favor of camping in the forest and then going to the into Goodmead in the morning when it's lighter. 
Agreed. Uh, you, you, you would have suggested going in while it's dark, where no one would notice the sheriff being sort of hidden there. Uh, there That's like people see that we're actually sheltering him. There is also another option. Uh, it is usually not advised, but we could split up. We could stay here with the sheriff, where it is safer, and let uh, Lawrence and some of the rest of us go into Goodsmead to do a, a scout, I believe is the phrase. Uh, something like that. Um, last I looked, there weren't actually very many oil lights in the crowd of Goodmead whenever I was elected. Uh, only two that I saw actually carried any sigil. Well, perhaps we could go in and then maybe Yurik can take the sheriff in after. So we don't have to split up too much. Yes, that Good is uh, an option too. We should work out some kind of way to uh, message each other to let the second group know it is safe to proceed. You have your owl, don't you? Oh, yes, of course. Gabriel is always with me. Well, I think that would be a good indicator. Is ah, I, I see what you are saying. I can send Gabriel ahead to retrieve a message from you. Oh, by the way, yes. Ah, that is very clever. Surprise me sometimes. <laughs> yes, he's doing it a lot. Uh, we are perhaps being a bit uh, rude, I think. Uh, Sheriff, what are your opinions on this? He crosses his arms. Um, well... What you foot forward sounds like a good plan. Mate, well, as, as far as I know, the Orvalites who are obsessed with human sacrifice mostly center between uh, Bryn Shander and the other two bigger ten towns. That would be East Haven and uh, Targos, right? Right. So, the ones in Goodmean are less likely to be kill crazy. They just want warmth, that's all. Yes, but yes. let's keep them in the shadows so they might not report to their fellow worshippers. Safety sake. That's true. Less people that know that Sheriff is here, the better. Well, when and if we go to good meet, you are more than welcome to bunk in my uh, cabin, Sheriff. It's somehow appropriate that the town named after really good mead is the mellow one. <laughs> I don't know, that uh, Shander Froth guy, yeah, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> Say that out of character. <laughs> well, I think going directly to, to Goodmead would probably be the best idea. Camping out in the Icewind Dale would not only risk our danger from the weather, but also from the natural inhabitants. Oh, that is not an issue. I can provide us uh, shelter from both. Really? Uh, yes, I'm sure <laughs> you have noticed I have some magical ability. Yes, but uh, I'm afraid I don't quite understand. <laughs> ah, you have trusted us so far. I ask that uh, perhaps you patiently uh, trust us a bit further. As we get further into forest, I can show you. Of course. You must believe me when I say I hold you all in the highest esteem. Very oh, that is most appreciated. And uh, I see you. But um, probably best not to uh, tarry here too long. Right, well, by all means, lead the way. Yep, see what we want to get in the forest a bit more, to sort of be obscured more, you know, before I make shelter. Yeah, so you, you, uh, Yurik, um, you know, you, you're, I imagine you're sort of leading the party at this point. 
pretty much, um, I would say so, especially into the forest. Yeah, so you, you get you get pretty deep in before you feel you know there's, you're surrounded by just pillars of tree from end to end, all blanketed with tufts of snow, um, obscured from both the sights of Bryn Chander and Goodmead. You feel you're pretty well insulated. All right, I'll uh, suggest Zunis does his mutual magic. Sorry, oh, my mic. Excellent. Uh, this place will be uh, perfect for this. Uh, everyone, please uh, gather around. Uh, you'll need to be within about uh, 10 15 feet of me as I cast these, just to be safe. I'll go get into Halberd range. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he sets aside a few components and lays them out in a circle around the party and uh, takes a good solid 10 minutes of chanting and arcane ritual and all that fun jazz. But uh, slowly, a dark, opaque sphere starts to envelope the party, uh, obscuring our ourselves from external view. And you notice that the climate inside the sphere is actually steadily becoming more and more comfortable to a point of actually being temperate. It's quite Interesting nice. Interesting magic. Oh, yes, I, I'm quite uh, proud of this one. I just recently learned how to uh, accomplish this feat. Figured with all the travelings we are doing, uh, and frankly, the ambushes in the night, we needed some kind of protections against such things. It has the, the added effect of being uh, nearly impenetrable from the outside world. It's a good thing you... we won't really need to build a fire and you'd be comfortable. It's uh, less conspicuous. Well, oh, not only is that, uh, they would not be able to see it from the outside in any case. But I imagine the smoke could still be visible outside, yes. South, can... Southwell's eyes just widen. It's like... Well, you are correct. Is... Never seen anything quite like this. Uh, the rest of you are free to come and go as you need, but I must remain inside for this spell to last. Uh, I think I'll take a seat. Southwell will do, we'll do the same. Barnes is putting his hand out of his feet. And from the outside world, the, the sphere looks like a mix of uh, mostly whites and some browns a little bit of a uh, like greenish tinge to it, so it's effectively the camouflage and winter tree colors. Gotcha. A fun little spell, ain't it? Yeah. Perhaps we should have got rid of the footprints we left. See, you oh, wasn't it snowing, snowing out? It was, it was actively snowing, wasn't it? Yeah, there's, there's like a light snow going on right now. Take care of it. It's to be hard to see the footprints in the dark. Um, I'm not a tracker. If you want to, you can freely come and go as you like. <laughs> I will peek out the dome. Have the footprints been covered by the sun? Um, at this point, you can still see them uh, as if they were made fresh, but there, there is some filling. Probably imagine like maybe like another couple hours they'll be completely erased. Uh, I'll backtrack like five minutes and just sweep away. Find a, a branch with some leaves on. Okay. And so five minutes of just uh, raking away your path, and you you feel pretty <laughs> confident that not a trace has been left. <laughs> Just so they get to a point and it just goes, the trail just goes. Yep. While we are resting here, uh, if it is not too much trouble to ask uh, uh, Mr. Southwell, excuse me, Sheriff Southwell, do you know why they have decided to come for you now? I... I am not certain. All I, all I know about their rituals is that they rely on Oral's power to perform some kind of lottery. I 
can only guess that my name was amongst those selected. But in truth, there is something more that is troubling me. What would that be? He kind of looks amongst the group and uh, begins to peel back um, one of the sleeves of his coat. And you can see on his forearm a prominent sigil, like a, you know, like a diamond, where within there is an intricate snowflake ingrained into the flesh. And you can see it glowing faintly. In truth, it was not the rioters that awoke me. It was this. I felt a cold chill in the still of the night in my own home. When I woke, this was on my arm. A brand. Hey, have we seen that sigil before? Uh, you have. You immediately recognize it as the sigil of oral. That looks like some sort of death mark. Zunas coldly regards the group for a few moments as the sheriff is showing off his uh, symbol here. And tentatively he comments, You do not realize it, but I believe you have all seen this before quite frequently and recently. He pulls his, his own sleeve up to reveal a, an identical mark on his forearm. That's why they said in the house that there's another one. Yes, yeah. indeed. You have, I'm sure, wondered before why uh, a water elf, I believe you refer to us as, is here on the surface, wandering around the ten, to ten towns. That is why. What does it mean to be marked by them? Does it mean to be hunted? Or doing nothing? I cannot return home, lest I bring the Auralites down upon my community. Yet I do not truly have a home here in Ten Towns either. What am I left to do? I find other people of like minds. I have adventurers. As you call yourselves. Does that mean they can track you in the sigil? In truth, I do not know the uh, magical implications of this. It is uh, spiritual magic. It is not arcane in nature. I do not know this. Well, for whatever reason, they seem to be able to know and track you. I believe the okay. the ones who have blindfolded their eyes can see such things. Fortunately, they do not seem to be particularly common. Well, they haven't exactly chased you down, so I don't think they can do it from afar unless they see you, maybe. Uh, have you had a cleric look at it? Sorry, I didn't catch that. Have you had a, a cleric look at it? I've not encountered such, uh, such people in the Ten Towns. Not that I could trust. The only clerics that I've encountered are Auralites themselves. Hmm. You have not noticed that the Ten Towns is not, not exactly known for spirituality. That's actually not true, Southwell speaks up. Oral, a long time ago, uh, didn't have quite the presence she did over the Icewind Dale. There were others as well. Uh, in fact, within Bryn Chandram, Sure, you're familiar with the House of the Triad. Right, that's the one. Um, the Morning Lord. Um, who's the no, other? no. the The Morning Lord has his own temple. Yeah. But <laughs> the Orlites shut that down two years ago when they were getting into power. No, the The House of the Triad is a uh, another place. It, um, it houses the other three deities of the Icewind Dale. Umberly, of the Torrential Seas. Malar, of the Animals. And Tempest, of the Storm. Maybe unrelated, but what was that statue that Temerity was lugging around? Uh, I can't recall the name, but... Same as I 
Where did, I where did we leave it? Uh, you left it in good need. It's still in good <laughs> Um, It's Sylvanas. Is it that from World of Warcraft? <laughs> Isn't that from real life mythology? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, World of Warcraft. Tell me how one fantasy property might be based on the same things another fantasy property is based on. <laughs> no! I, I can't believe it. Yes. In fact, it's, it's funny you mention it. Instead of storms, we've gotten blizzards. Instead of animals, we've gotten this circle of frost. And now you, CF, or, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Triton. Right, correct? Uh, yes, that is the technical phrase, but I've long since uh, doubted to listening to other people's. Is this well, even so, the, the domain of the Sea of Moving Ice has long been the domain of Umberly. At least until Oral gained prominence in recent times. It's true. And the Thander always used to bring the sun. Yes. In truth, this everlasting rhyme has lasted so long I've almost forgotten what sunlight's felt like. Uh, Halden gets uh, uh, his hands glowing. says uh it's not the real thing but closest I can get while this is going on uh, Vogel will put out his great sword and check the rune oh and that's very convenient What is? Uh, I got a a whisper from the GM at, at the time. Uh, <laughs> Lawrence uh, tunes his loot a bit. Yeah, Vol's I showed you here. my ruins. Please respond. Yeah, Vol's just <laughs> staring at the uh, <laughs> staring at that rune. Divine intervention, as it were. <laughs> um, and Southwell, of course, and kind just. Uh, nods in respect as you display this radiant energy. Ah. Then you are one of the Order of the Morning Light. The sun will come again, Southwell. Can you, uh, excuse me for a moment, guys? Just gonna step out. Okay. Uh, if I'm you could, stupid. please uh, use the ditch uh, a dozen feet away at least. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Can I walk away a bit and stare up at the sky? Alright. <laughs> Under the trees. <laughs> I'm sure there's gaps. Well, I thought so. You're you're leaving. I thought you were getting up. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, <laughs> in character, Volg is leaving the tent uh, okay. hut and going out to look at the sky. I'm not going AFK to look at the sky. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go look at the sky. Um. All right. He just just stands spending some time to himself. Sort of looking between the sword and then up now and again. <laughs> Um, as as you clutch the sword and move away from the radiant light of the hut, it does seem to grow a smidge colder. Uh, so it's getting colder away from the hut? Right. Oh. I get it. 
goes back to the hut. <laughs> uh, hold on, that thing you did with the the light. Yeah. Mm, you think you can do that again? Yeah. I do it again. <laughs> Anything special happen? Uh, no, but the blade does get warmer. Hmm. Is something the matter with your blade? I don't know if it's uh, a matter as such. Uh, nah, so while it's... you are all sitting around the <laughs> the radiant palm, um, Southwell does coughs like, <clears throat> well, while we are here, perhaps we should discuss what we should do from here on. Well, you asked me, it seems as if this uh, lottery, quote unquote, is pretty much just targeting, well, it, here are there maybe random people, but also important figures. It could be you today, it could be Duvessa Shane tomorrow. We have to find some way to uh, perhaps sway the townspeople in our favor so that when the Orlites do run amok, they don't have as uh, much of a mob fight us with. Does anybody know how this lottery is conducted? Here, how? What means they have to target one individual out of the entire populace of ten towns? It is actually quite impressive. It must be some sort of magical oh. means. But then again, as I said, it might just not be coincidental at all. It might be that they're targeting specific people that are getting in their way. Yes, but I think, uh, the, if there's an intelligence behind the decisions of who to target, that means that there is someone making that decision. Yes, that's true. There is. Who would that be? As far as I know, this individual goes by the name of Father Limick. Ah, I heard his name at the Speaker Council meeting. I've never seen him, but my militia have told me of his existence. Apparently he is leading the Children of Oral. And I would suspect he is the mastermind behind their conspiracy. But to answer your other question, they conduct the rituals within the House of the Triad, the home of the former gods. Each time they do, a bit of the aurora touches down. I imagine that Oral's will is manifested in some kind of way. So we likely couldn't investigate the House of Triad ourselves, given that uh, it's probably crawling with oil lights. No. I don't think getting rid of the leader would do much help either, considering it's also popular in other cities around here. Yes, and I'm... As big as Bryn Shander is, there's no way of knowing if he's even there. But it would be a... I would consider it one of their big bases of operations. We do also have access to the militia. If I can get a word in to some of the men, we could orchestrate something. Unfortunately, the Oralites and the townsfolk, they've... 
managed to brainwash to their cause outnumber us, but we could do something. Please be careful that some of the militia are not brainwashed either. At that, Not Southwell me. kind of shoots you like a, a stern look. You can clearly see that he has the loyalty of his militia to heart, but it breaks away for a moment as he sighs. I wish it to be unthinkable, but even I can't deny that there is some possibility of it being true. Well, we're in desperate times, desperate calls. I would not be surprised if most of the populace is only uh, going along with this because it is seemed that this is the least path of resistance. If path opposition resistance. is shown, perhaps they will not be so motivated. After all, a line of heavily armed and armored uh, soldiers is enough to change many people's minds. Uh, I was about to say, the um, when we first came to the in Shanda, there was a, a murder of some Orifies, or oh, whatever the call, sorry. No, it was uh, an Orolite that got sacrificed. No, 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 not, not the one outside. It was like, because remember, Yurik followed them to the House of Triads, I think? It was like a murder in the town itself. Oh, yeah, one of, one of the um, Orolites had been killed by an ice knife. Which, which you found to belong to Sephic Caltro. Yeah, but there was... I followed someone, didn't I? Oh, yeah. Um, that was Shander back in... Good me. Well, Sh Shander went to Targos. Yeah. But there was there was a brother who also went to the House of the Triad. Back some sessions ago. That was like the, one of the first sessions. I mustn't have been there, I must have been half paying attention. <laughs> that was a couple of months ago now. Um... No, I was, I was going to suggest that like a link between maybe like someone's using the sort of religion anyway, and even killing their own. Just like if we could maybe expose them for basically a... Uh, Scandal. We might get people to not be influenced by them. At this point, it might have to be a little more than that. You would have. The only way I could see us reasonably swaying the people is to show that oral can be bested, but how do you fight the winter? Same way we have been all this time. I don't know, we looked sort of uh, Halden for a suggestion on that. I'm I'm curious, uh, Sheriff. Have you heard from Danica at all recently? No, I have not. I was busy attending to the Speaker Council. But we can, f if we can find them, perhaps uh, a, one of the Druidic Orders, they would be able to give us some suggestions on how to combat this thing. Nature is their uh, belly wick after all. Perhaps. But I don't know where she is. <laughs> to the best of my knowledge, she's either here or in Lonelywood searching out the Chewingas. Well, if there's one thing that I could think of, perhaps she's found that um, altar out in the woods where the moose was. It was related to elves. She's an elf. Had signs of, you know, being used by druids. Maybe she's there. <laughs> as as you're talking, Zunus is uh, goes into a bit of focus, and suddenly, all around you, <laughs> forty-five pounds worth of food and. Uh, 35 <laughs> gallons of water uh, just immediately appear within this tiny hut. <laughs> Not that tiny. It's like 20 feet around. But still, it's like 
e each available spot is filled with something. <laughs> uh, this, thing thing about about as, <laughs> this thing is about as big as my apartment, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the food is bland but nourishing. Uh, can we make a caveat to that and say the food is great and nourishing? <laughs> no. It's it's okay. <laughs> Just it is what it is. Cherry are we pie. having um are we having a, like a long rest here or a short rest? It's up to you. Guys. Just wait till morning. So we're long resting? Waiting until morning would be a long rest, yeah. So I suppose so. I mean we can get everybody's uh, used up slots back and what have you. Yeah, they probably be back for Fazunas. We were we were at like middle of the the night venturing here, so like if a long rest, this is gonna be a closer to like eleven or noon probably. If it's a short rest, I'll just pop a few. Uh, what you call them? Head dice. Yeah, well, what would you guys do? E either way, I could just use. I, I short haven't rest used. Help back. I haven't like, used like resources or anything. Same. Plus, yeah. I can use a uh, song of healing uh, or rest or whatever. And... Get yeah, more back. Max, Max dice out. <laughs> um, it's totally up to you guys if you want to. I think uh, the question is whether or not you want to approach Goodmead while it's still dark out or in broad daylight. Well, Yuri would have suggested going where it's still dark, so no one knew that we sort of like shepherd the sheriff into town because presumably no one's going to really see it. Then that would be short rest then. It's good. Um, short rest. That's enough to get action surge and then Song of Rest or help me out. Song of Healing is just an extra d6, right? Um, no, it's whichever, whatever my inspiration die is, so it's d8. I mean, I, okay. I'll have to double, I would have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure that's the case. I haven't played Bard in a very long time. Ooh! I thought he had the first time playing Bard, but I, I'm like it. So. Do you have the thing where you get max hit dice? Um, I think that I, uh, I need to get Cook's utensils so I can use the chef uh, feet. <laughs> Cook. Oh, that's that's enough anyway. Yeah, two hit dice fills me up, so I'm good. Yeah, same here. It'll go up to D8 at level 9, by the way. Oh, that's pretty far it off. Doesn't, it doesn't follow your inspiration. Considering my train of thought was getting to the very center of that room, I didn't take too much damage. <laughs> well, they went down a lot faster than I thought. Like, I thought we were going to get some of those glowy-faced bastards. All I can say is I'm happy to not have had to burn down the dude's home. Because that's fully was what this, I was expecting to happen. Was this house? Was <laughs> the if, you, if you had gone first in initiative, would you have burnt the house down? I would have thrown a fireball <laughs> in the middle of that mess, yes. I was going to say, that's why I was going to grease everyone up. I was, I was fully intending to throw a fireball in there and then climb up the outside wall to his window where the owl was and carry him out that way. <laughs> but this worked great. <laughs> Less property yeah, damage. We just we just killed everybody, you know? Let's cut them all down like dogs. They're cultists, they don't count. <laughs> yeah. That's true, but what about the uh, one innocent guy we froze? He was a future mm. cultist. He was, he, was he was a war crime. That's it. He was a collaborator. <laughs> um... Oh, that has guilty bad bias. Guilty bias. <laughs> that has bad connotations. Never mind. <laughs> after, 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 so, as, so as you guys finish up your short rest, uh, what do you guys ultimately decide to do? Are do you know some again? sheriff at the very least are staying put? Okay. Uh, uh, I mean, like okay. the overall plan. Are you going to continue the good mead? Are you going back? To yeah, the yeah. Center? Continue good mead where it's sort of like that. Uh, get the sheriff into uh, the speaker's house with the guy. It's like. So hopefully no one knows he's there, and then uh, I guess we'll sort of like discuss our plan from there. I presume. Yeah, we don't let's, really have see, one. 
I'd say have a couple of us go in first to check there's no trouble or anything sinister waiting. And then yeah, like five I'll minutes go. later, the others come in with the sheriff. Name I would say yeah, Lawrence, Dunes, Halden, yeah, would go in. And then Dunes can use his bird thing to tell me, you, and the sheriff to come in. And on that note, so, we also have business in Dugan's Hole and in East Haven. After that. Gabriel, go with Sim. Oak, when you are ready, uh, attach a note or something to her leg and send her back. She will know where to go. Right. As uh, Gabriel flies over to you and promptly perches on your horns. <laughs> right. Yes, I'm going with horns. Yes. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Were you were you not going? Uh, I think me and Lawrence are going first into the yeah. Okay. Good lead. Yeah. So I, I got Lawrence, Volk, and uh, Yurik are going in, right? Alden, do you wish to stay here or do you wish to go with him? Sheriff and I uh, will I be perfectly we... safe here if we need to be by ourselves. Alden shrugs. You think you're gonna be fine, but I don't know if they can sense your little marks there. I think it'd be best if Halton stays, just in case with the with the mark. Should I stay or should I go? I'll stay. stay. There will be trouble. Leave. There will be trouble. All right, so uh, Yurik, Volg, and Lawrence are heading into Good Mead while Zunas, Halden, and Southwell stay behind. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, oh shit! Sorry. All right. Um, yeah. As as you uh, split the party, then uh, you, Yurik, uh, lead everyone on from the tiny hut. Um, <laughs> along the way, you even. Uh, pass by the remnants of the Verbeeg lair. I don't like the place. <laughs> Still in the hole. What? I, I, I was mentioning the, the hole. <laughs> the poop hole. The damn hole. Yeah, they still catch a the faint ugh, smell from it. Um, but soon enough, you arrive back in Goodmead. Um, still dark. But you have the... Uh, light of the snow, as it were, to sort of uh, guide your path. Um, but fortunately, the speaker's house is sort of on the southern end of the town, so you sort of have like a roundabout way of getting up to it without being seen or having to go through everything. Um, right. as, see... as, it, as it currently stands, all the lights are off. Okay. Do I see anything around, like anybody? Uh, not at this hour, no. At least as far as you can tell. Yeah, I presume uh, what we would kind of do anyway is we'll try to hit the route with the least amount of windows, basically peeping out. You know, the the route with the like least amount of people who could potentially see us. Yeah, that's why I say like you, you kind of go in like a roundabout way. Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's totally feasible. Um, yeah, soon you're you're sort of like right up beside the speaker's house. Mm. All right, I'm gonna tap on the window. There's no response. Who are you knocking for? It's your house. I'm... You go through the window instead. I Does you have the key? I do have the key. Lawrence whips out the key and spins it on his uh, index finger. Uh, I just, I just thought it would be uh, less, it's just uh, obvious if we were to go. Uh, the window instead of the right to the front door. You think if someone's looking out the window of their house and sees us climbing through the window, that's less obvious? I'm the speaker. I can do what I want. <laughs> well, can I have the key so I can go in the door? <laughs> Fine, we'll go through the door. <laughs> Once Hudson walks over to the front door and sticks in 
sticks the key in the lock and he opens it. Chink. It's a little <laughs> creak. Um, you step inside. It's it's cold, unlit, but you you, you at least will probably with the more attuned like sense of smell can at least like detect that like as of recently it's been lived in. Um, and only not too soon as you after you enter, um, there's an immediate uh, rustling from uh, upstairs. Um, hello, is anyone there? It's me. Lawrence, I don't want to alarm you, but there may be a Pokemon or Bogeyman in the house. Upon <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> upon hearing uh, Lawrence being mentioned. Uh, the voice calls out, Aha! So it is you. Uh, yes, it's me, Jace. Um, and from, nice. da- from the stairs, you see a uh, figure descend completely in a uh, night robe. Uh, well, this is probably the first time you're seeing them, but you see this uh, uh, dark, tan individual with even you know, olive brown hair. Um, from your experience, you know, you, this is clearly someone from the southern end of the Sword Coast. And he's got this strange, um, long, uh, almost like faintly musket shaped item in his arms uh, that he lowers as he finally reaches the base floor. Well, you certainly picked an odd hour to turn home for the evening. Ah, uh, yes, uh, I know. Um, I can explain that. Uh, well, we were going to stay in uh, Bryn Shander for the night and care about some business, but, uh, you know, the sacrifice was, <clears throat> was happening, and it turns out that they were after the um, sheriff. So we had to uh, spring him out of that situation. Ah. Uh. Well, I mean, it's your house. I'm just staying in it. Um, and you can immediately see, like, all, all around sort of the outskirts of your vision, there are uh, little little bits and baubles that have been placed, like little like vials on the windowsill. Empty um, monster cans. <laughs> much, much of the um, kitchen, kitchen instruments have been displaced in favor of uh, uh, extended vials and uh, other glassware suspended over the hearth. I uh, see you've certainly uh, made yourself at home. Do you keep the kitchen workable, at least? Uh, I don't need to eat much. But Not um, before we... if you need me to move it, I can do so. It will require some difficulty, but it can be done. Well, it's, it's no trouble now. Nothing to worry about right now. Um, Good, then I'll leave it where it is. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I take it the kobolds are, um, behaving? Oh, yes. They are sound asleep. <laughs> Good. I, I, they didn't give you any trouble when you first came here, did they? Imagine. Oh, no, no, no. I, you know, I can be very persuasive when I'm trying to convince three very energetic kobolds to sleep. Well, I um, hope you don't mind having a, a temporary roommate. Uh, no. I mean, by all means, it's your house. Of course. Um, who is this roommate? Um, well, sometimes me, but also the sheriff. <clears throat> sheriff. Yes, is that a problem? No, I I just... I was not expecting to hear that. Well, I guess it was a good thing I left Bryn Shander when I did. Yes, everything's gone to pot. It wasn't just the Oralites after him, it was the townsfolk as well. They'd gone into a frenzy. (laughs) You're telling me. 
Well, it'll make for interesting conversation. That it will. Um, tell me, have you made any headway with your uh, potions? I am making some. Admittedly, I've spent a lot, a lot of the past 24 hours accommodating. It will take a few more weeks of research before I've established any uh, notable progress. If there are any sorts of uh, components you require, uh, feel free to ask. Uh, in, in the morrow. I'm much too tired to go over that now. Eh, understand. So where, where is the sheriff? I'm not seeing him with you. Mm, we decided to come in, to split up and come into town just to make sure that there weren't any, weren't any people uh, out and about that would see us coming in. I see. That's smart. Fog's just silently standing in the doorway with an owl on his head. <laughs> uh, Let's go fetch the others, shall we? Anyway, this is um, uh, Volgan. Yurik? Volga's the tall one? Yurik is the, um... Yurik. The one with the slight scowl. Yes, the one who's <laughs> always angry. The, Yurik saying. scowls at the alchemist. <laughs> Very witty. How do you do? Oh. By all means. As long as you're not trying to kill me, we'll get along just fine. Everyone come in and close the door. You're letting it the draft in. We have to go get the others. Oh. Lawrence, okay. can I have some paper? Okay. You've, got, <laughs> you've got paper, right? Yes, of course. Um, Lawrence goes to like a, you know, a random drawer, like at a desk, and grabs out a piece of paper for Volk. To him. Do you have a pen? Um, what? Sure. Um, he goes and Lawrence goes into his own bag and a gives coin. him a pen. Uh, it's like a, it's like a fancy kind of looking. Gold coin. Yeah, it's like a, it's like a almost like a. Is it a magical you know, like a girl pen? <laughs> it's like a, it's, it looks like a, a fancy old fountain pen almost. Okay. With like that like golden point. Very extravagant. Yeah, like something a noble would have. What should I write? Um. Um. Arrived in Goodmeat, in Speaker's house. It's safe. That's a lot of words. Um, you don't write much, do you? In Here. house. And he ties that to the owl's leg. <laughs> and shoot it away. Okay. <laughs> Jace, meanwhile, just yawns. Well, oh, if you need me, I will be trying to claim back what is left of my beauty sleep. He turns <laughs> around and heads back up to the second floor. So me, I need my I own say, rest. I think Yurik would address the owl in face because like, I'll come and receive you. And obviously. He will go and receive the other party members. <laughs> okay. Um, Zunus, after probably around uh, three hours, uh, eventually your owl returns, <laughs> perches on your shoulder. Ah, Gabriel, welcome back. Got a, a bit of dried jerky. You can see that there is a bit of paper tied to her leg. Uh, let us hope everything is going well. What was paper? What does he read? In house. That's it. <laughs> ah, elegant as always. Well, if you're ready, uh, if you two are ready. It's time for us to go. It seems that it is safe enough. Right. Let's get moving then. All 
Alright, so uh, we, we head out. The tiny hut disappears into a blip. And all the like melted snow and like the ground is left steaming because it's that much warmer than the surrounding uh, winter area. <laughs> and we trudge on through to the other side. Okay. Um, by this point, it's it's pretty early in the morning. Um, you know, roughly six or seven a.m. If you had to guess it, you've been up all night almost. Um, but you arrive back at the speaker's house where uh, Yurik is there waiting for you. Give a hand wave and greetings. But did you run into any complications? <sighs> Shake his head. Just the weird alchemist in the house himself. Just the old fellow. Oh yes, I had forgotten that he was here. Uh, Sheriff, uh, I assume that you do not know each other. He sees uh, uh, Jace Allweather. Uh, he's a uh, something of a merchant. Uh, more importantly to our services, uh, an alchemist. Offer I've heard the name. Exchange for room and board, he has to agree to offer us uh, certain services. Well, I mean, sounds like a fair arrangement. I have no qualms with the alchemists. Well, uh, my question is, what do we do from here? Lawrence, uh, do you know, as the speaker here, uh, do you have any paperwork or knowledge about uh, what kind of militia we could raise from Goodmead? It even has a militia. It does have a militia, but it's quite um, small. Goodmead is definitely smaller towns eh, in some way we could possibly train up more militia but that would take time um, yeah from from what you are aware of uh, Lawrence having being briefed uh, on the town's details um, you reckon you probably gather up maybe like 10 or 15 soldiers and there are, there are two veterans within the town We have about 10 or 15 men. Two of them know their stuff. To start. It um, is. I could perhaps ask for assistance from, say, Lonely Wood or another um, town even. Um, from what I understand, many of them are already dealing with their own issues enough. I had to do a little PR in order to get their support. Wayland from East Haven might be more willing to offer assistance. I'm not uh, particularly politically minded, but this sounds like the inklings of uh, a grand accomplishment in the works. As a yes. speaker, you could negotiate with the other towns to organize a collective uh, resistance to these Oralites. We cut off their supplies and we cut off their sacrifices, their power will dwindle. That's what I think. But we were half and half at the Speaker Council meeting. I brought up the idea of stopping the sacrifices completely, but only five of us were against it. Myself, Devesa, um, Waylon, um, who else? Nimsy Huddle, and um, Horus from um, Tourmaline. The others were all... I'm going to give you a point of inspiration just because you were able to recall all of that. Yeah, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> I was paying attention, sorry. No, no, I know. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> so you, you get a point of inspiration, which uh, Lave, you can use it to re-roll any, any uh, attack or save. Basically, any well. any d20 that hits the table, you can re-roll it. Yeah, you get, a, you get uh, one free redo. There's a little box on your sheet 
um, for it, Ezra. It's Excellent. just above, yeah. Just click it, and it'll put like a little thing in it. Dragon so, icon or something. Um, Used to be. Amongst them, um, I feel like I should fill you all in. Uh, two of them, I'm quite suspicious about. The um, speaker of Targos and the speaker of Cairdinaval. Uh The speaker of Cairdinaval is uh, Kranich. He's an asshole. That's all. <laughs> he's a noble that sits behind his. His walls, and I suppose he's not really um, on the up and up about what other people are suffering of. He doesn't have to wake up in the morning and wonder where his food's coming from. Oh, so perhaps uh, he would be swayed by uh, whatever is most uh, advantageous to him in his uh, position, and if he sees the rest of the speakers going in a certain direction, he may be motivated to go as well. Perhaps. And Nerth. Um, Nerth seems. At first, he seems like a good man, but there's something suspicious about him. I can't shake it. I'm wondering if perhaps the, the story of what has happened with the sheriff here may motivate some of them that might be. Uh, oh, what, what do you call them? The wooden separators between buildings? And uh, fence, yes, uh, on the fence. Uh, yeah. If they could go after the sheriff, they could go after one of their speakers as well. Yes, that's what I was thinking. It could be sh the sheriff one day, it could be Duvester Shane the next. Who knows? Do the other speakers have that mark? Mm, I didn't see a single one with it. Of course, um, I wasn't grabbing them all by the wrist and turning up their uh, shirts to see their uh, see if they had a mark. Actually, when did that mark appear on using this? How long has it been there? Dunis is visibly sweating. <laughs> <laughs> the hard question. <laughs> about two years two years I got this tattoo and I don't remember it I woke up with it and it was just there <laughs> Zunas went on there like a drunk crazy bender and uh, he just woke up with it one day <clears throat> woke up with a tattoo one day I, I do not know politics or the way of people's. Uh, what can we do to sway the rest of the speakers to our thinking? Well, they all seem to have problems, issues at hand. Um, so we kiss ass by doing what they want. Yeah. You avoided so in the other question, words, we it's... continue doing what we've been doing this last month. Yes, and we see if there's... um. Well, pretty much that, yes. And if anything else comes up, take care of that, too. Um, because as of right now, we got five on our, on our side and five on Oral's side. Not that they completely agree with Oral, it's just that they are going along with the sacrifices because they feel like they have no other choice. Where do we start? And what will the sheriff do in the meantime? I suppose that's up to Sheriff Southwell. Uh, Lawrence looks to Southwell. As I have stated, I swore an oath to protect Prince Shander. I would like to return as soon as possible. I think perhaps now that... Uh... They have lost the element of surprise, and you know that there is a threat there. You could perhaps protect yourself uh, more readily. That, and if you can trust the loyalty of your militia. Um, how many men are amongst your militia, Bryn Shander? Well, we have a good number. If I had to estimate, there's about over 200 soldiers. 
That's not bad at all. That's uh, far more than the estimate of the Aurelites I was given. Uh, about a hundred. The Aurelites are few, but the problem is, is that they have swayed a good portion of the population to their side. That's true. Or, perhaps, I do not uh... wish to draw my blade upon the people of which I've sworn to protect, as mad as they may be. Find You've... some way in order to um, sway them to our cause. Make them see that they don't have to sit under the oppression any any longer. I think perhaps a heavy guard of uh, two dozen loyal guardsmen will be enough to dissuade anyone, so that you do not need to draw a sword. In the meantime, uh, there is that business in Dogen's Hold, yes? In We have two things. Um, a bear investigation. Um, Nimrud Dermrud, uh, Dermrud? Dermrud. Dermrud. Um, request that we investigate some, uh, hammers. There's some hammering she heard in the mountains around Dukin's Hole. And, um, East Haven there was the investigation, um... Yeah, the, um, Valen asked you to, um, search out a location to the northeast. The, uh, Valin, the woman with the eye patch, inquired that we uh, investigate what might have happened to those uh, adventurers that went off with the wizard before he uh, was burned at the stake. So, perhaps, perhaps then we could use this time to investigate those matters, and the sheriff can return to uh, Bryn Shander, establish a personal guard to dissuade the Orlites from ma making such a a midnight attack is that has happened uh, and use that time to uh, send missives and discussions and have meetings with the rest of the speakers to relate his story and to tell the populace of these be a good idea perhaps so, it will be enough to sway some uh, public opinion you probably have to send some letters I, I don't think we'd want him running around if you would like I could try and persuade the Speaker of Dugan's Hole for you. My word still does carry some authority, even beyond Bryn Shanter. Perhaps I'm able to sway that stubborn woman to our side. With you and I together, we could probably move that uh, old mountain of a woman. But perhaps it would be best to save that for after we're done with our little task. Can easily combine the two. We travel as a group to Dugan's Hold. Take some of the good meat militia with us to act as a honor guard for the good sheriff. And that will free us up to continue our investigations once we are there. Uh, uh, I do not know if uh, the number of guards and whatnot is actually viable. What do you think, Volg? As a fighter, this is more your area of expertise. Um, how many uh, fighters were there? Like 14, did you say? 10 to 15. 15? Two of them were uh, veteran fighters. Uh, we don't really know how many Aurelites there are. Yes, that's true. We don't know how many Aurelites are actually in good that matter. I only remember seeing two of them raise their hand for uh, Shander Froth back in the uh, election. Uh, it depends. Like, these Aurelites have some magical powers we've seen. They also have sway over the public. Uh, case of how how these men, these fighters, would react to that sort of magic. Would they turn tail and run, or would they stand and fight? Uh, 
I suppose I'll have to assess that myself. A few I questions. Perhaps help with that, or we could at least brief them to know what they're... so they know what they're getting into. Yes, I think you could help with that. Well, that would probably have to wait until morning. A meeting with the gods of good me tomorrow, then. Right. That and maybe uh, say hello to some of the townsfolk. It's been a while since I've been in town. I'll have to check in at the shrine as well. I do wonder if he's made any progress without you there. Perhaps you could ask, um, Shander Froth or some of his carpenters to help with the repairs. Hmm. Might be a good idea. So I suppose for now we just retire to our, uh, rooms. Actually, um, Sean, uh, tell me. Your rooms are uh, in this house. Um, uh, I do not have. Well, I, w I would say there's probably like an attic space. You know, it's it's very similar to Nimsy's house, but bigger. Um, so it's got like a, a large space floor where there's like you know stuff for a kitchen, stuff for a fire. Um. Some tables, some chairs. Uh, I think I remember there also being there's like a, a separate like bedroom. And there's also the I mean, it's, it's, there there is of course the attic space with the bolts and chaser up there already. Yeah. So well, like to kind of frank, there's there's a space enough for everyone, but there's not really like separation. Yeah. So you probably just have to lay out your mats. That in the attic is probably the warmest place in the house. <laughs> that said, it's nearly morning already. <laughs> Let's go. Let's sleep. Mm -hmm. We will not rest until the ore lights are thwarted. And by not rest, I mean longer than seven to eight hours. Um, well, Good. as as uh, as you all take what little rest you can um, in this passage of time, um, fortunately you arise fully rested um, and ready to sit about your tasks for the day. So as I understand it, you... Lawrence and Volger checking out the town, seeing what uh, uh, what people's uh, combat aptitude is. And yeah, and say hello to some townsfolk here or there. Specifically briefing the guards here on what to expect from those uh, banner bearers or whatever they're called. Okay. And their and their weird magic bullshit. So are you are you affirming that the children of Oral are enemies of the town? Uh, that's Lord's to decide. <laughs> um, I would it's like a take decision. <laughs> My decision. Um, I would probably keep that hush hush with whichever guards I can I I, I can uh, perceive to be trustable because I haven't really talked to all of them. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm gonna have you roll uh, insight. Okay. Right now. Yeah, because like basically, like as you sort of like as everyone wakes up, eats breakfast, and sets to the task, you and Volk begin to uh, talk to the militia of the town. Um, you're using this insight sort of gauge which ones are uh, against oral or for them. Okay. Um, yeah, so with, with your insight, um, 
yeah, you're, you're able to get a pretty good idea of um, what what the general uh, tendency is here. Um, uh, uh, I'd say like about 60% are against oral. Like you, you, you clearly sort of detect like um, uh, some disgruntled vibes as you, you know, speak with them, inform them of you know what to expect. Forty uh, percent, you feel, are a bit on the fence. Like they could be swayed, but if it came down to it, it's it's hard to tell where their loyalties lie. Okay. Do I know which? Do I, can I, I can tell which ones of those are that way. Yeah, so like we'll say, you know, like uh, of the, uh, let's see, um, yeah, like of, of like the 15 people that you interview, you you know for certain that like, you know, 11 of them would, would support your cause and another four would be hesitant. Okay. Um, are the two veteran guys um, against Oral? Uh, one is and one isn't. Of course. <laughs> Had to be that way. Could Vogue gauge um, what their sort of combat ability is by sparring with them or something? Uh... How useful are they in a fight? Lawrence will watch by making fake binoculars um, using his hands. <laughs> I will let you roll a perception with advantage because you you obviously have combat experience. Um, uh, wow, well, seventeen. All right, so with a seventeen, I am actually going to just send you this privately. Mm -hmm. Let's get down to business. <laughs> you get to see that. And that is the capabilities of those veterans. Uh, can I infer from that what the, the other guy is? Yeah, they're, they're, they're not as good. <laughs> yeah, they're, well, they're they're both like you know the same relative uh, combat ability. Okay. That's somewhat useful. In that way. Um. <laughs> once he's figured that out, he'll go and tell the others that uh, he thinks the. Not sure about their way towards oral or against but uh, in terms of combat prowess they are okay <laughs> he could he could beat them all up at once but they are okay well maybe if we uh, if you spar with them enough they might stand a chance for five seconds I'm not a coach Well, this rapier isn't just for show, but I don't really trust my swordsmanship as much as I do yours. Well, I can spar with me, but I'm not the talky type. Uh, so, while this, so while you guys are doing this, um, Halden, you're you're going to check out the temple. Yeah, chaos. Might have slipped away. Or his mic is muted. You haven't said anything. His uh, his thing's lighting up. No. Oh, oh there you are. Hope oh. you can hear me now. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. So, uh, Holden is checking out the temple. Yes. Okay. Um. As as Volg and Lawrence have gone about to do their things, as you head to the 
Uh, Temple. Let me just let me just pull up the map of Good Meat real quick, so we can all see. Um, as we head to the shrine, you can see that it's actually um, with the repairs that you and Myron have done, it's in fairly good standing condition now. Before it was sort of like a, a creaky shadow of a place, but now you can see that there's some resilience to it. There's still there's still a bit of work that needs to be done, but you know there's there's not as many holes in the ceiling. How then smiles? Yeah. At this and uh, heads inside. Um, inside you can see that the uh, walls in particular have been. Uh, whitewashed, painted over. Um, a lot of the uh, religious, the religious symbols of um, Tempest have been withdrawn. Um, as you sort of stand there in the uh, open hall, um, you find Myron there. Uh, he's currently making a pot of tea for the morning. Um, And as, as he sees you there, his uh, whiskery brows raise like, ah, Master Holdren, you've returned. Yes, uh, it's looking good, Myron. Yes, I did away with the dwindling murals of Tempest. Start with a clean slate. Leave room for newer adventures and tales. Indeed. It is a good effort. He also gives a, a wry smile. There's um there's also someone here to see you. Oh. Yes, yes. in fact. They stepped out just as you left, but they are over in the graveyard. He kind of gives a tilt with his head. You can see there's a faint smile on his face. Anyone I know. He just smiles deeper and then leans into his teacup. Well, thank you for telling me. Take care of yourself, Priestley. That's. Let me go to the graveyard. As you uh, step out and see the various gravestones, um, among them you immediately see this hooded figure uh, looking down towards one. It's a pondering a knob. <laughs> God, I hope he is. Pondering a corpse. But uh, <laughs> as as uh, the sounds of your footfalls crunching into the snow reach their ears, um, they turn around and unveil the hood. Uh, and, and indeed, it's someone that you recognize. Um, when they were part of your order, they were known as Reinhardt. Um, as he turns, he flashes a, a thousand watt smile. You can see that fiery golden hair on top of his head. And upon seeing you, he just continues to brim as though filled with the light of the Morning Lord himself. It's like, I knew it was you. <laughs> You had uh, that much foresight then. He steps away from the grave for a moment and just kind of stands about a foot away from you. Just his uh, pale blue eyes just piercing into yours. And then after a moment, he rushes forward and pulls you into a big, strong embrace. I also ah. clasp him, say... It is good to see you. <sighs> the pleasure is mine. But 
and my travels around the Icewind Dale. I've heard that someone was making waves among the Ten Towns. Yes. Well, I figured it was time to stop hiding away. I've um, found something out that is crucial to perhaps ending all of this. He slowly pulls back, but leaves his hands upon your shoulders. You have. Yes. I would not speak of it openly. Perhaps in the speaker's house or the shrine. He glances for a moment, then uh, looks around. Good thinking. Yes, perhaps let's take our audience inside. You should know, Reinhardt. Temerity is... Uh, he's dead. At that, Reinhardt immediately looks crestfallen. Oh. He just looks down at his feet, goes silent, hands still on your shoulder. I see. Do you know how he died? Fighting against oral servants. I see. Not a bad way to go. No. No. If you run into any of the others. I have seen Martin. But we parted ways shortly after meeting. Mm, That was some time ago. I see. Come. I would share the news I have. Perhaps it will lighten your spirits after such crestfallen discoveries. He follows you into the shrine where by this point you see that Myron has already made two additional cups of tea and uh, has already begun to sweep out the dust from the floor. I am with a band of powerful folks working with them to try to improve the Ten Towns and eventually end all this. None of them are members of our order, but they're all good people, all the same. The reason I left my self-imposed hermitage, I saw her. My heart, I saw her going out into the myriad floating islands of ice north. Aha! You did. She does it every time she renews this curse. So that, uh, Reinhardt immediately sort of goes from his slumped, crestfallen state to immediately being filled up with energy. It's like, that's great news! His voice sort of bouncing off the walls of the the shrine. (laughs) Indeed. We know that she must have something there that makes all of this happen. Or a connection to something. Perhaps it's vulnerable. If we can gather strength enough, make our way up into the flows, find it. Well, we might be able to just weaken her somehow or end all of this. I see. Yes. Yes, we, we might be able to do it. However, we need to prepare. I. We're not be foolhardy and say we should rush immediately 
into the uh, well, endless expanse of ice out there. We need strength and knowledge foremost. I have uncovered some information that may help you. You have. Please share. Yes, in my journeys around the Icewind Dale, I too have seen some things. Namely, are you are you aware that the Aura Lights are searching beyond the Ten Towns? I had heard something of that. It's a recent development, isn't it? Yes. Well, the, as you are well aware, they kept their organization within the Ten Towns right around the time we were forced out. Yes. But I happened across some as far as Revel's End. Strange. So, of course, he says with a smile, I persuaded a few to tell me what was going on. They, unfortunately, were a bit vague. They were being given orders by this Father Limic character. Hmm. But they were told to look for something. A structure of some sort that was out in the Icewind Dale. Apparently the... Uh, some wizard had blown in through East Haven and they had managed to catch a word with them. Wizard? Yes. I think it was fairly recent. I, I heard that they uh, executed him over in East Haven. I yes, I, I saw this. Oh. He... I know. He had some kind of structure, I think. I can't remember where I heard it exactly, but... There was some kind of mention of a tower of some sort, I think. Or maybe a, he made a place? Yeah, so apparently there's an ancient secret somewhere buried in the Icewind Dale. And the Aurelites are desperate to find it. Well, that can't be good then. Whatever they want would only bring about more misery, I'm sure. Halden leans yeah. back and says, Perhaps we should find it first. Perhaps. What are you and your company doing these days? Solving problems, mostly. We were set to go to... Dugan's Hole, I believe. There was some kind of commotion going on in the mountains near there. I see. I I think this matter takes precedence. To be frank, I'm, I'm not dissuading that your work is any less important, but... Agreed. Least, why don't... How about this? How about I investigate whatever is going on in these mountains? I'll act as a scout. Like we always do. Hmm. And then you can go investigate whatever this structure is. I think I've heard some rumors that it's somewhere to the northeast of Lac Dinashir. Hmm. It's a good start. I, I agree with you, Reinhard. This takes precedence, but oh, my companions. Well, we can broach it with them first. If they're yes. good enough for you, they're good enough for me. They've all been affected by oral in one way or another. I'm sure we could be convincing enough. Then let's just go to them. Let us not make haste. Uh, Halden will sort of uh, knock his hand against the table and says, yes, he stands up. Let's go. 
Um, so by the time you and Volk, uh, or Lawrence and Volk have arrived back at the speaker's house, um, some while later, uh, Halden returns with a uh, new person in tow. Ah, we'll making friends, are we? Friends. Said the same thing. <laughs> this is actually an old friend of mine. Even better. Member of my order. That he makes a uh, deep bow. You may call me Reinhardt Bjarnleaf. Reinhardt, perfectly fine. I've heard much of your... I've heard tales of your adventures around the Icewind Dale. And word has reached even my ears. He's brought some interesting news. The I Orlites, see. as we know, have been leaving the Ten Towns to conduct a search of some kind. Reinhardt has learned a bit about what they're looking for. We all know of the mage who was burned. Correct? We saw it. Yes. They are searching for a structure he inhabited or made, perhaps, um, that might contain some knowledge or perhaps an item of uh, some kind of key to old power here. Is the association or relation to the structure that uh, Yamanoto talk mentioned? I think so. And from what Reinhardt's learned, it's somewhere north of Loch Denishir. Yes. I've also come to understand that you have existing obligations over in Dugan's Hole. Um, yes, I, I do. Uh, I told the speaker I would investigate that myself. Uh, with my... With everyone here, of course. You can send me there. I, uh... I've helped the people of Dugan's Hole actually recently. Perhaps you've heard of my exploits. There were some children kidnapped, and I took the call. Oh. Is this you something that we have heard of? Uh, indeed. It, uh, it's one of the rumors uh, at least with Dugan's Hole about wolves as large as horses. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah. Oh, um, you you do recall, in fact, that some individual had stepped up and solved the problem. Someone stealing our exp EXP? <laughs> Reinhardt is trustworthy and competent. I have no doubt of that. Ah, very can well. We, can we ensure the sheriff's safety with him? Well, I don't think the sheriff will be going with him. Thought that was the plan to go to Dog and Hold with the sheriff. Um, our plan was to go to Dugan's Hold with the sheriff and um, sway him to Durm Dur Dur to our Durm route to our side. Perhaps it is best that I go then. I did, in fact, save some of her town's children from these monstrous wolves. That if I and the sheriff go, this should aid your cause just as variably. That is perfect then. Hmm. That does work out. We can look for this structure. If you do, please um, tell uh, Indra that you are here there on behalf of... Uh... Speaker Lawrence of Goodmead, as um, he had other uh, obligations that came up. Perhaps you should write a letter of introduction. That might Speaker be a good speaker. idea, Lawrence. Something from your hand. Right. Okay, so Lawrence is going to take out a, a piece of paper and write up a, a letter explaining the situation. Tendra, because he did promise to uh, look into it himself, so he could just say that um, he 
Williams and uh, Reinhardt do it. Yeah, he's basically Our acting as your liaison. All right. All right. Oh, it's, we don't it's know. politics. When you say you'll do it yourself, it means your people will. Yes, but Lawrence is a man of action. <laughs> <clears throat> we don't we don't uh, quite know what's going on up there in those mountains. It could be something horrible, so please do be careful. He, he raises a hand. You can trust me. I will not get involved. If it is something horrible, and uh, far more than one person can chew, then um, tell us and we'll take care of it together. If there are innocents in danger, I cannot make such a promise, but... In any other case, I will keep stealth as a priority. At that rate, I wouldn't judge you. I would agree, in fact. Good. That seems we seem eye to eye. Well, what daylight there is left is rapidly passing us by. It's no time like the present. Daylight is burning. Yeah takes the rich and quickly furls it up into a scroll and tucks it into his uh, little side pouch. Very well. Sheriff Southwell, a pleasure. Kind of gives a nod and Southwell does the same. It seems that's settled. We shall go to Goodmead and you to the Icewind Dale. Do well then. Uh, safe travels. I stand. Uh, I sort of go and uh, give him an embrace. Say, "Be safe, brother." He returns it and uh, firmly clasps your hand and says, "We we will meet again. I will return." Make sure it is so. Let the light of the morning, Lord, guide your way. May it never fade. With that, he grabs up his bag and escorts Sheriff Southwell the way to Dugan's Hall. Well then, I'm curious. Are you very close with each other? I, it's just that I've not heard you utter as many words in a single day. A little long show of fiction. Well, they were my brothers and sisters. <laughs> they were practically family. If I was uh, going to be close see. with anybody, it would be them. Ah, I see. Very important to you, then. Incredibly. is reassuring, actually. Oh, how so? Well, I do not mean to put this in elegantly, but uh, you are rather standoffish. It's good to know that you have uh, tight connections with people. Oh, well. It's just my gruff nature. I'll warm up yes. to you eventually. He's just a, little, just a little rough around the edges at first, that's all. I'm sure there's a heart of gold in there somewhere. He gives a, a wink to Zunas. <laughs> ah, I, I see. Well, uh, perhaps in time, uh, you may come to consider the rest of us is uh, a sort of... Well... A very odd dysfunction of family, to be sure. I already consider you acquaintances, at least. Ah, it is a start. Well, uh, he clapped his hands together. I guess we best be getting ready. Or does anyone have anything else to accomplish? Nope. Right. Start packing then. All right. Did anyone else have anything they wanted to 
do before you guys headed out? Nope. Not really. Doesn't have any relations to this town really. How are we doing so, for like uh, potions? They're kind of hard to come by, right? No, we have that no. guy. Yeah, that guy you sent here. Jace, I don't know if he's got. He, he said like he didn't have a, a lot we, done right now. We kind of clear, we cleared him out like a day ago. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so we're, we're loaded no, on. You, yeah. But you you do have the agreement, so like in in two weeks he will provide you with some potions. Yeah, and Zunus is always uh, harvesting, collecting, you know, picking as we travel to make I, I, his own potions. So I feel a lot better about the travel now that we have the tiny hut. To be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's quite helpful. I mean, yeah, Zunus is, is a lot more comfortable falling asleep at night as well. <laughs> getting getting the shit care out of us every time we rested was kind of not good. Yeah, yeah, that that wears on a guy. Not great. Yeah, but we're we're just well more well equipped to deal with the groups now that everybody has like two attacks. Mm. Yeah, so do the enemies. Um... <laughs> oh yeah, that too. Yeah. Fuck, you're right. <laughs> Yeah, if we hit them first and kill them, they won't get the chance to get off. In in any case, as far as uh, things to accomplish, things to do, um, in a hand waved variation of this, uh, Zunus would like to spend some time with Jace, comparing notes, research studies, just being like intellectual geeks together for a bit. <laughs> scientist to scientist, as it were. Gotcha. Um... Brainstorming ideas of how to duplicate artificial sunlight through magic somehow yeah as, as you talk with jace just just from the sense you get you, you you immediately tell that he's not very much the type to like engage in conversations unless he has to but the moment you start talking about like uh arcane natures and like uh magical engineering he immediately sort of lights up Like getting a computer engineer into a discussion, like current topic, sports, blank look. You start talking <laughs> code, they'll talk your ear off. Pretty much. As I can attest to. Um, but soon enough, with all said and done, you've gathered up your supplies, made what preparations you need to, uh, Head out of good need. Heading along the northern road before meeting along the east way and further beyond. And that's where we will end tonight's session. Right. Oh no, we're getting close to Care I don't want to have to deal with Kranich. <laughs> well, actually, so that's a good question. Are you are you going about Lactinashir the way of East Haven or about the Kyers? Well, this seemed to be a priority, yeah. 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 How far? How? How? Where? Like, where is it generally near near Lack I mean, this is this is you, basically us investigating the same thing that Valen was asking us to investigate, right? Uh, it, there does seem to be a bit of overlap there. Um, but you were given um the northeast of Lack so like, sort of like around this area. Okay, so we could probably go either way. We could pass through Kaer Dineval and Kaer Koenig or go through East Haven and um, go that way. What do you guys think? We haven't been to the Kaer's yet, have we? No, we haven't been to either Dineval or Koenig. What I can say about Dineval is... Um, I've the, been speaker, the speaker isn't great. Um, and in Koenig, the speaker is a drunk. Yeah, but... Like this one. Yurik's been Koenig, and he has favor with them. Oh, well, yeah, that's true. Trobus is nice, he's... He just... He's just always, uh... He's the guy who has vodka with his toast. In the morning. Who does I, I, I think it'll just frankly be more interesting to go through so, yeah. Dineval and Koenig <laughs> than just traveling through Wilderness. Speaking yeah, as, terrible. uh... Speaking yeah, out of character, thinking. but as a player, it's like, yeah, let's go to the two towns we haven't done yet. 
<laughs> yeah, that, that's that's what I had in mind, but I wanted to get everybody's opinion because one might be safer than the other because we already know Wayland in East Haven. Let's just go to yep. care, whatever. Care Conan, we're, care. we're heading where you're a token as well. We're good. Okay, we're, yeah, we're going to yeah, Xenoval. So that's where we will pick up next time. Awesome. Yeah, Thank yeah. you as always, nice. Sean, and for everyone else. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Those thank joining you. us on stream, as always, have a good evening and thank you for joining us. Bye. Yes. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.